So here we get into a discussion of throw and how much throw occurs at different angles and different speeds. These graphs are with zero side spin, which means there is no side spin on the cue ball. The first graph is plus or minus 100% vertical spin. 100% plus, plus 100% vertical spin is forward roll. Minus 100% vertical spin is near maximum backspin. With the cue ball traveling at 10 miles per hour and rotating at 10 miles per hour, this is a rolling cue ball. This graph is also the same with a cue ball moving forward with 100% backspin. A cue ball traveling at 10 miles per hour and backspinning at 10 miles per hour, per hour produces the same throw as 100% rolling cue ball. This is because it is friction that causes throw and friction is the same for both scenarios. The second graph is plus or minus 50% vertical spin. This graph is showing 50% forward or 50% backward roll. Frequently when you are playing pool, your vertical spin is something less than 100% forward roll or 100% backspin. For example, if you hit the cue ball with only one tip of vertical spin, top or bottom, it produces a sliding cue ball. Eventually, the cue ball will produce 100% forward roll. If it contacts the object ball before it produces 100% forward roll, the throw will be greater. The third graph is 0% vertical, which means the cue ball is sliding on contact with the object ball, which is in essence a stun shot. The cue ball is sliding when it hits the object ball. There is no vertical spin. Our diagram of the cue ball shows tips of spin, which is the green circles, percentage of spin, which is the blue lines, and the miss cue limit, which is the red circle. One tip of spin is equal to half the diameter of the tip as shown by the green circles, which shows one, two, and three tips of spin. Percentage of spin is shown by the blue lines, with each line representing 25% of spin. So you have 25, 50, 75, and 100% from center in all directions. The red circle is the Miss Q limit. The mapping of the cue ball has been discussed in our video on mapping the cue ball. The mathematics of throw is done in percentage of spin, not tips. For this discussion of spin, we are using percentage of spin, and you can use the diagram to convert to tips of spin if you prefer. If we go back to 100% spin, this is the graph we are going to start to explain. So basic, so this has your throw angles in degrees as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 degrees of throw. And this is negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 degrees of throw. And this is the cut angles for those degrees of throw. So this would be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 degrees of cut. Let's look at the 30 degree cut to begin with. So say we put a line here at 30 degrees. In this diagram, green is a fast speed, blue is a medium speed, and red is a slow speed. So let's say we are going to look at a slow speed at 30 degrees. So at 30 degrees, you would have to over the cut, overcut the ball by a degree and a half to have the ball go to your exact destination. For a medium speed, you would have to overcut the ball by three quarters of a degree. And at a fast speed, you would have to overcut the ball by a half a degree. If you wanted to look at, say, a 45 degree cut at a slow speed, you would be about 2.4 degrees of overcut at a medium speed which is the blue you would have to overcut the ball by a degree and at a fast speed you would have to overcut the ball 
by a half a degree. So let's say we're going to remember that the 45 degree was 2.4 degrees, 1 degree, and a third of a degree. So say if we look at this at a pool table, and we put a ball on the foot spot. This would be a 15 degree cut. This would be about a 30 degree cut. This would be a 45 degree cut. This would be a 60 degree cut. So if we say put it at 45 degrees, this would be the 45 degree intended direction line. We always put the intended direction in red and we put the amount of compensation aim in white. So if we zoom in on this area, the red line is the intended direction of travel. If we were going to shoot a 45 degree shot with a slow, we would want to aim 2.4 degrees overcut to have it go in the intended direction. Again, the blue is 2 degrees and this is 4 degrees of overcut. So for a slow shot, you'd have to aim here to have the object ball go here on a 45 degree cut. For a medium speed, you'd have to aim 1 degree of overcut. So you'd have to aim here to have the ball go here. And for fast, you'd have to aim it about here to have the ball go here. So let's say we're going to do plus and minus 50%. So we're going to change this number to, let's say, minus 50. And it would be the same as if I put it at minus, at plus 50, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. So if we change this to 50, the graph is exactly the same. And it's exactly the same because friction is exactly the same as at plus 50 is minus 50 topspin. Again, we're at 0% English, no side spin. So again, if we go to 45 degrees, uh, we're going to find that our slow speed is about 3.9 degrees of throw. Our medium is about 1.9 degrees of throw, and our fast, maybe about 0.6 degrees of throw. So there is 3.9, 1.9, and about 0.6 degrees of throw. So if we go back to our pool table, if this is our direct, our intended direction, the red line is always our intended direction. For a 50% rolling cue ball, we're going to have to actually aim up in here to have it go to that direction with a slow shot. With a medium shot, because the slow shot was 3.9 degrees of throw. The medium shot was 1.9 degrees of throw, so we would have to aim here with 50% plus or minus vertical spin to have it go along this direction and for a fast speed we'd probably have to aim about here. So if we go back to our original diagrams let's say for this example let's do a 30 degree shot but this time we want to do a stun shot. A stun shot was going to be 0%. So now we end up in this graph. You'll find stun graphs to be hard to wrap your head around initially. But if we look at stun at, say, a 30 degree shot, for slow, we're up at about 4.8 degrees of throw for a slow shot, slow being red. For a medium, we're down about 3.2 degrees of throw. 
and for fast you're down at about 1.1 degree of throw. You would have to aim the ball to overcut by 4.8 degrees. So if this is 2 degrees and this is 4 degrees, you're going to have to aim up in this territory. So you're going to have to aim here on a slow stun shot at 30 degrees. If you had a medium speed, you're going to have to aim at about 3.2 degrees of overcut to have it go along the intended line of travel. And at a fast speed, you're going to have to aim at about 1.1 degrees of throw of overcut to have it go on the intended line of travel. When we were looking at the 100% topspin and 50% topspins, there was always a clear red, slow, blue, medium, and green. When you are in stun, up to the first fifteen degrees or so, slow, medium, and fast stun are the same amounts of throw. After that, your fast speed runs on a different curve, but your medium and slow runs up this same line to this point. So at about 25 degrees or so, medium and slow give you the same amount of throw. And then as you continue further, slow goes up to this spot. So if we went through all the graphs and all the lines and the places, we can put that in a summary chart. So here are the numbers we can put on a chart. This is for no spy, side spin. This is basically cut induced throw. We have degrees of 15, 30, 45, and 60. We have 100% vertical spin and the amount of throw for slow, medium, and fast. The same with 50% vertical spin for slow, medium, and fast, and with a stun shot for slow, medium, and fast. You'll notice that for slow, medium, and fast at 15 degrees, the amount of throw is the same. I'd like to make it some logical thing that you can remember, but basically you just got to get to the pool table and practice. I'm sure this will improve your game quite a bit, just learning this. So just kind of a quick summary. If you're at 45, 60, 30, or 15 degree cut on the object ball to the corner pocket, if you're shooting at fast speeds, and you want it to go along the red intended direction line, you'll find at fast speeds your amount of compensations are quite small and you'll find that most of the time you're in this area from here to here for compensation for a fast speed. The only time it gets a little bit more is when you're in about that 15 degree territory, in which case at a stun shot on a fast speed, you're up in about this territory. So you just have to compensate more. You just have to get used to it, shoot a few shots.